Title, The New York City Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and Art Beyond Sight present Project Access New York, Best Practices for Inclusion in the Arts, Thursday, May 2, 2013, the Museum of Modern Art. The afternoon session of the symposium began with greetings from two people who spoke from a podium on a stage in an auditorium. The speakers are Kate Levin, Commissioner of the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and Victor Khaleesi, Commissioner of the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities. Ms. Levin speaks first. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kate Levin, and I am the Commissioner of the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. And for those of you, thank you. <laughs> for those of you that attended this morning's session, welcome back. And to those of you just joining us, welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, my agency and our colleagues at the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities were very pleased to support Art Beyond Sight's first ever Project Access New York City Symposium, and we hope that the information that you're going to hear this afternoon hear this will be useful to you and your organizations and to the audiences that you serve. Um, before we get started, I want to say a quick thank you to our amazing hosts here at the Museum of Modern Art. And I think they have played a key role in guaranteeing the amazing weather that we are having, <laughs> that we can't really appreciate in this room, but uh, hope that you all caught a glimpse of um, on your way down here. And of course, to Art Beyond Sight. And to all of you for being here and to all of the folks that are participating as our panelists. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce my uh, terrific colleague, Commissioner Victor Calise of the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities to share some information about his agency's priorities. Have a wonderful session. Victor. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for being here and welcome. Um, uh, Sorry that I wasn't here this morning for everything, but uh, Kate Levin and I uh, and all the commissioners got called to the mayor's office uh, for um, a briefing this morning. So uh, sorry that we weren't, I wasn't able to make it this morning. However, I'm here now, and I'm thrilled by the turnout this afternoon, not just because the room is filled, but because it represents organizations in all five boroughs. I think it's an impressive display about how the city of New York can come together around one single theme. And that really is access for all. And you know, when I came in um, this afternoon, and just you know, I've been to MoMA a bunch of times, and thank you, MoMA, for everything, um, for hosting us today. It's important. But as soon as you came into MoMA, and for a person with a disability, there was it just screamed accessibility. And and, and for a person with a disability, and and you know, pe people who are able-bodied, and you might see it, and might not, but it's just there. You come in, there's accessible doors. Um, it shows that there's loop systems all around. Um, the, things are in Braille. It's just, it's just really welcoming, and, and that really is important, so thank you. But here's a little background on um, the spe specific reasons we're here today, and that's some of them I just mentioned earlier, but it's Project Access New York City. It's a series of New York City-based initiatives that has two goals. One is to suggest a framework for successfully breaking barriers of participation and bringing together cultural institutions, institutions and patients with disabilities. And two is to create a model uh, for the metropolitan areas around the country for accessibility. And Project Access New York City was conceived by Elizabeth Axel. Elizabeth, where are you? Are you here? There you go. Um, of Art Beyond Sight and Matthew Saplin, my predecessor, the uh, former commissioner of the Mayor's Office for People with Disabil Disabilities who passed away last year in... Um, we truly miss them. Mayor Bloomberg pu publicly announced this initiative in August 9, 2011, at our uh, annual Gracie Mansion event. Now, Project Access New York City is co-chaired by Jason Michel. Thank you, Jason, for everything that you do. He's my deputy uh, commissioner and general counsel of the mayor's office. And um, Elizabeth Axel, who we know is, is passionate about everything that she does. And since the mayor's announcement, Project Access New York City has done a lot of important work. The, pro the Project Access New York City database is the first national database of accessible cultural institutions. Many of New York's parks, zoos, and museums have already registered. So if you haven't registered, please do so. It really makes an important part. It takes about 15 minutes, and just go to projectaccessforall.org. The Project Access New York City has organized a number of focus groups with people with disabilities in various boroughs, collaborating with the Bronx Center for Independent Living, the Brooklyn Center for Independence of the Disabled, and vision services. 
This morning, I'm sure you've heard of all the preliminary outcomes for these focus groups in today's conferences, and we'll continue to do so this afternoon. Project Access New York City is also working on a series of white papers addressing cultural issues around inclusion and accessibility. Many New York City arts and disability experts contributed to the creation of the white papers. Now, I have an opportunity to tell you a little bit about the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities, and, and that's important for me because I am the commissioner. So uh, it was created um, as an executive order to act as a liaison between all city agencies and disabled residents and visitors to New York City, and that's some of the things that we do with, um, with cultural affairs today. We are advocates for the disabled community and work every day to make sure that people with disabilities are included in the discussion in everything that we do and everything that the city has to offer, whether it's inclusive, inclusiveness and accessibility housing, which we just held, hosted a housing symposium for people with disabilities, employment, which is our disability mentoring day. So if people are interested in getting involved in our disability mentoring day, please let me know. I'll be happy to tell you a little bit more about that. Transportation, we're advocating for um, many accessible taxi cabs as we possibly can. And I know that some people have mentioned that they saw me in the taxi cab. So if you've seen me in the taxi cab uh, TV, I'm glad to take a ride with you. So thank you. <laughs> and um, education and cultural institutions. That's just to name a few of what our office does, because we really do touch every bit of every agency and everything that we do. So although you might not see accessibility uh, in some areas, but believe me, we, we are out there trying every day and working with all our agencies. Um, and I invite you to go to our website, find out a little bit more. It's nyc.gov slash MOPD. Um, and most of all, thank you for coming here today to learn about the institution, how your institution can be more inclusive for people with disabilities and their family and their friends. And I promise you, it's not as difficult as you may believe. And by implementing small, simple solutions, you will find an increase in passionate customer base who will pass along the word to, your, to their friends that your institution is the place to be. And um, now I'll just turn it over to the next panel. So thank you for having me. And, uh, Thank you for Cultural Affairs for being part of this. Thank you, MoMA, and thank you, Elizabeth, and uh, everybody. So um, thank you. Title, www.projectaccessforall.org. Copyright, Project Access for All, 2013.